Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us again at the 2020 International Online Theatre Festival hosted by the Theatre Times. For those of you who are joining more recently or have found out um, again recently about the festival, since the 15th of April, we've been screening a number of productions from many different countries. And we're thrilled that with the collaboration of Digital Theatre Plus, we were able to host and screen two productions from companies based in, in the UK. So earlier last month, we screened Richard Twyman and the English Touring Theatre's Othello, which was also followed by a Q&A, which you can find uh, live now on our website. And over the past 24 hours, we screened Mole Weatherall and Reckless Sleeper's Negative Space. So we're absolutely thrilled to have Mole with us here today. Mole is a visual artist, a theater director, and director of Reckless Sleepers, which was founded in 1988, and which is a company based between the UK and Belgium, comprised of a number of international actors. And Mole will be speaking in a conversation that will be hosted and led by with Mike van den Heuvel, who's professor of theater at the University of Wisconsin-Madison. So thank you so much, uh, everyone, for, for logging in and joining us. And over to you, Mike. Thanks, Alma. Uh, welcome and thanks to everyone for joining us. Uh, presumably, you watched the film version of Negative Space. Uh, now, after having many times watched the fourth wall being dismantled, you can claim that you've seen the first and the second and the third wall rubbish as well. Uh, Mole, pleasure having you here. It feels almost normal to be meeting you in the small box of a Zoom meeting since it's been through small boxes uh, that I've seen all of your work, first in Parasite, uh, then Schrodinger, before Digital Theater Plus made this wonderful production of Negative Space uh, available to view. So I wondered if we could begin, uh, if you could background us a bit in the starting point for Negative Space and its relationship to uh, these works, these past works that I've mentioned. Um, yeah, certainly. Um, well, Negative Space really started, like most projects, they start in the development of another project or touring of another project. And there was a moment when we were touring Schrodinger in about 2011. There's a moment in the show when I threw out some chairs from the internal box of Schrodinger and it and the chairs made this really nice mountain of chairs. And I thought, oh, it's a real pity because uh, no one in the auditorium can see this. So we had a chat after in a coffee bar in Aberystwyth. And, uh, and I said, oh, I'd really like to make something from this, from what people don't see. And then everyone said, yeah, great. And the conversation moved on. I said, well, why don't we try to look at what we made within Schrodinger and, and sort of advance that. And the most uh, obvious form was uh, something that we call contacts and uh, contact a mathematical thing. And, it, and it, it's really the basis of um, Schrodinger, sort of mathematics and stuff. And, and, that, and then Kevin, at a later meeting, said, well, now if, you do, if, we do an, uh, if we work on a new project, which is based loosely on um, Schrodinger, then why don't we put the box upside down? And that started a whole new debate, like upside down, wrong way round, a negative, positive. And I suppose that's really how we started to work on what we now call negative space. Uh, and then I suppose quite early on in the process, I, 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 was, I was quite interested in designing a one-to-one -one model. So normally you do a one to 25 or one to 20, one to 20 scale model, and then send that off to some carpenters or, um, you know, some factory to get it built up. And I thought, well, it'd be really nice to, to make a model box that's that's actual size. So why don't, so we built this frame out of wood and then clad it with plasterboard because plasterboard's really easy, cheap material to install. And we clad this frame and then and then uh, and then so well let's smash a hammer through, see what that's like. <laughs> And so someone smashed a hammer, I can't remember what it was, but it was the most amazing thing. 
So then we spent about four weeks smashing up plasterboard and finding out what we could do in this um, in this construction and 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 playing and and then after these four weeks of playing, we started to put something together uh, from all of this mess that we'd made, and that became negative space. But it but like a, a massive prehistory. It, 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 it does relate to a project called Parasite, which we made in 94, I think, 92, 94. Um, and which in, in Parasite, the audience sit inside this box. It's a, I don't know the met metric version, but it's 20 foot, 24 foot square wooden construction with windows and doors. And uh, the audience sit inside and we perform within and around and outside. And eventually this box falls to pieces so yeah i've only actually made one piece it's just repeated itself in different <laughs> forms over the last 20 20 six seven eight years i love all of the reversals that took place between schrodinger and negative space uh, nicola shaughnessy had said that uh the black box of Schrodinger rem reminded her of the black box of kind of early models of uh, cognition, uh, but also the black box of theater. So I'm wondering what have been the responses to the white box of negative space? How have people been responding to the reversal of the color? Um, well, I can talk about what, what we thought <laughs> um, uh, first. The, it, it, it feels a little bit more like a gallery. Like that, that's, a gallery space and um, I think that's one of the reasons why we introduce flowers because um, it's 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 a kind of graphic you know object beautiful color within within this white expanse um, I'm, I can only really remember actually what one person said in a post-show discussion about all the holes in in the set made them think of Sarajevo, which was, I mean, it's not that we wanted to make a project about war or the effects of war. Um, but I, that, those are the only, the, the only things that I can recall about using a white rather than black, black box um, space we were thinking or I was thinking that in Schrodinger we used chalk and we're chalking on this blackboard and I, I imagine that Schrodinger went on for such a long time that it just became white <laughs> and plastic plasterboard made out of chalk effectively so it, <laughs> it was like yeah it's a, that's the consequence of Schrodinger was a white space. But actually, we think now that negative space is a, a prequel to Schrodinger. It's more, it's more like we, we, don't, we don't build doors. We, we build cave openings and then, you know, they're, not, they're not very regular shapes that we build. So that, that, that's kind of logic that we're thinking or have been thinking. Um, it's uh, typical, you speak often and very eloquently about the way that you and the company confront the way that meaning is made uh, in the uh, build up to your shows. Um, you talk about encountering failures and breakdowns and having a go uh, at, at something. Uh, so what were some of the turning points in negative space, some of those moments of uh, encountering uh, an obstacle that uh, moved you in one direction or another? I, I, I talked about the flower, um, bringing on the flower, and, and, and that was, that was, a, that was a, a, a moment of, of change within, within the development of negative, negative space. There was also this, we have this thing called contacts and maybe I explain contacts a little bit. There is, um, I can't really, so on this table, there's, there's one object, my book, if you take, take that away, that's zero, that's one, two, because I've got my hand or elbow on the table, two, one, you can see me. 
and that 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 base of mathematics um, is what we use in Schrodinger. Now, in um, in negative space, we 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 learned that if if two people touch each other, then that can, kind of cancels out the mathematics. And so we started to play with that and 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 and, and contact contact within contact. So that was a big change. Um, there was you know little things like Kevin and I would would often go out to buy some stuff from a DIY shop and have these great ideas about what what it could be and kind of logics and um, and and then come back to the rest of the group and the rest of the group were, what, what, what are you talking about? That makes no sense at all. So there was all these, the, those kind of uh, issues. There's one, um, there was another moment when I'd, uh, I'd, I'd actually pose the question, how do we get on stage? That was quite, quite early on in, in, in the making of that show. And I still don't think we've answered that question. Um, I think we've been a bit lazy with with the answer, <laughs> um, so that's maybe you know maybe maybe something else to to look at. Uh, um, and, Since and then you're not, when, please go ahead. And then when Kevin said, uh, you know, we should put the set upside down, that was that was like, oh wow, yeah, <laughs> I should have thought of that. <laughs> Just getting back to that issue of uh, taking the stage, uh, my students are always curious uh, about forms of performance when the actors uh, emerge on the set and they haven't submerged themselves in a character. Uh, so they're always asking, what are you thinking about when you're moving on stage if you're not busy submerging yourself in a character and, and preparing your motivations to stay within that character? What, what's going on in your minds collectively as you, as you take the stage? Whoa. Um, we have this process called intentions and it, it's, it's a process that we, we bring in, in within a lot of the projects that we make and intentions is, is really about trying to articulate what, what is going on in our heads at a particular moment in, in, in a piece. And that might be very, very practical things like I'm waiting here to go on or I'm waiting for you to drop that hammer or place the chair so I can move on. So there's, there's I mean, within, within negative space, there's, there's actually, it's actually very complicated and, and it does look a bit rough. It's quite tightly choreographed. So there's not that much time to think. <laughs> there's a lot of time is, is took up with... Where, where do I go next? What do I do next? For me, anyway. I mean, um, I can't talk about everyone else. I think I'm pretty... I, I can talk about myself. I can't talk about anyone else in the show. Um, I'm always very conscious about maintaining that connection with, with the people in the auditorium. And it, it, it's, it comes out as in extremes. And like, I won't... I won't allow the show to start, even though we're on stage, until everyone is in, in a comfortable place. Um, if, in, in, sometimes I've gone into the auditorium and, and moved people <laughs> into mm. the middle of the uh, auditorium so they get a better view. I, um, I'm, pretty, I'm, 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 all, I'm always conscious of that relationship. Um, and there are moments when we don't do character, we, we perform as ourselves within, a, within a, a set of rules or, I mean, that's the same for a string section and it's the same for all the projects actually. There's a, there's a certain set of rules about how we behave. But within that, I would say there are moments where, of clarity where we think, when I think, oh, this, this reads in this particular way and if I hold this object in a particular way, that, that would, that would read in, in, in another way that's aggressive or that's passive, but not really, but never really a, a character. We, we, when we're not actors, we're not pretending to be other people. It, we're, we're being ourselves, but our being ourselves is different on stage than it is in the supermarket. You know, <laughs> there's, there's, there's a way of behaving. 
and that and within reckless there's there's a certain set of rules about how we behave um yeah i hope that answers that question <laughs> It's interesting because I think uh, similar issues apply to the the usual procedure where you perform without a text. Still, it feels like there's a language to negative space and to Schrodinger. I mean, there's a little bit of uh, spoken language in Schrodinger, uh, not in negative space. Uh, what do you think of as the language of these pieces that are essentially non-text based? Um, well, it's not dialogue in Schrodinger, they're, they're sort of monologues. I, I suppose the only dialogue is when some, someone might shout out numbers and there is a response to that. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd say the language is, is, is a visual art language. Um, and uh, and, I, I, and it's odd because um, at the South Bank, we did, this, we did a show we did the show recently at the South Bank Centre and the marketing department said, due to the abstract nature of the project, they thought it might be difficult to sell. <laughs> and so I was like, what? Because <laughs> um, it's not abstract, is it? Because there are, there are figures, it's, it's, it's a figurative form. <laughs> um, there are figures in a space, um, so it can never be an abstract thing. Um, but within theatre, I suppose uh, it, it may be seen as what we do is abstract because we don't tell a particular narrative or have a, uh, you know, we, we, we don't do story, we do um, action or a, a visual or we create work that has a set of rules you know, or a task, like you have to destroy saw that chair that you sat on for instance um but i suppose within that there are a multitude of different narratives that we create and we can never i mean i i think we never we never say let's make this scene a particular have a particular meaning it could mean a million different things to the hundreds of people in that uh, auditorium and, and and also to each other and i'm i'm really happy with that um I'm, I'm yeah i feel that that's what we make and let's let's celebrate that and let let, let our audiences make up their own mind about what what it is that we see uh, what they see and what we do um, yeah one thing that might come out of the discussion around uh, the presentation of the work is how the resonances of a piece like this would change under current circumstances. I mean, I was thinking leading up to this, it couldn't have been more timely. We're being defined by these negative spaces that are empty spaces around us that are sort of demarcating and defining the enclosed rooms that we find, our, we find ourselves stuck in these days. Uh, so has the company reflected or have you reflected on these contemporary resonances of the piece? Yeah, and I think we always do. I think, uh, you know, we, I often talk about not, not, not just site specific, but also seasonally or specific or date specific to a particular presentation. And, uh, you know, some of those you can predict, like if you do a show on Halloween, then it has... <laughs> a resonance or if you do a show in Sarajevo it's going to have some connection to to that history um yeah uh it, it feels a, a string section also and uh negative space feel like that they really connect to what's happening right now <laughs> but uh it, but it, you know, but the, but but then I think they always um, make sense of where we are because 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 the language is open and the meaning is open and um, and we're uh, and we're quite open to to those you know those resonances happening when, when, whenever we present uh, the work that we do. Um, I made a show a couple of years ago with some students in um, 
Manchester Mets, and the and it feels really relevant right now. But the 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 form was people couldn't touch each other. You could get very very close, like that close, um, but they but, but they couldn't touch, and that and that feels like oh yeah maybe we should we should look at that again. Well, there was a, a project we made just before Christmas um, where people. If someone moved that way, someone else moved that way. So there was always like, like, like this distance between two people. That was sort of like a gravity thing. Um, yeah. I find that interesting. I heard uh, Daniel Wetzel of uh, Rumini Protocol say the other day that it feels like we're in the middle of a conceptual performance piece where there's just one rule, and the rule is stay at home. <laughs> and then everything becomes a kind of performance around that rule. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, we are we are gonna we're gonna try in a couple of weeks or maybe a month to do a version of a string section in the ten different with ten different performers um, based in different parts of Europe. Um, and uh, yeah. I, yeah, I'm still I'm still working out what what that could be or how that could be done, and I don't really know the technology for that. Yeah. But I'm I'm quite interested in. I was thinking about the weather, and if we were to do it outside, we you know we're all doing the same piece, but there's there's a different um, there's a different weather for each. each <clears throat> um, nice variation on environmental yeah. theater. <laughs> yeah. What what goes into your decision about uh, how to share your work online? It seems to me that might become a more pressing issue uh, as long as the sequestration uh, continues. Um, I think artists are going to be looking at uh, options for sharing their work online. But you've been pretty active doing this already. Uh, Parasite is available on Vimeo. Uh, Schrodinger uh, you've made available through your website and now DT Plus. Uh, hosting a uh, negative space. Um, is it your thinking that uh, this is a, a platform for sharing your work more widely or is there other, are there other uh, decisions involved in whether or not to present the work online? Um, well, there's a massive archive of stuff sat on a hard drive. Um, actually, there was a massive box full of VHS, VHS. <laughs> videos which I'd um, put onto some digital format and they're just sitting in a on a hard you know one gigabyte hard drive I'm not so super interested in just presenting an archive of existing work I, I just, the, you know there's plenty of there is plenty of stuff available I, I you know I make theater I'm a, I like the connection between people um, which is why we propose to do an online version of a, of, of a live piece. I'm interested in that. I'm interested in finding a way of keeping that dialogue alive, live dialogue rather than a recorded one. Um, but there's quite a lot of learning to do there about how we might achieve that or what technology we need to invest in to make that possible. But I think this, you know, I mean, you know, this last few weeks, months, couple of months has, has been an opportunity to have a look at stuff that we've made before. And myself and Alex and Kevin have been working on looking at developing a project in isolation of each other. And, mm. and, and that goes through peaks and troughs and... Uh, of frustration and now we're at a point where we, we we actually need to be in the same room together to work things out so that um but we might get through that and i think the more that we try to to play with and and use use this moment the more we'll get used to playing with that material and that's exactly what we do and what, how we create work anyway you know we didn't know anything really about the quality of plasterboard until we started smashing it up and playing with it for four weeks. So I think something new will come of, of 
trying to work remotely. Um, but it won't be a theatre piece, it'll be something else. I don't know what it, I don't know what it'd be called, but I'm interested in that uh, that dialogue. Well, with the hope that uh, eventually live performance uh, is possible again, uh, what is the company talking about with regard to future work? Yeah, um, well, we'd like to make a, a sequel to Schrodinger Negative Space. Um, at, at the moment, it exists in, in, in my head. So this might be the first time to share something. I imagine that we have a, um, a, a, a roof that eventually becomes a floor and that, and then that becomes a, you know, it becomes another platform and then maybe it rises up again. So that, that presently is as far as I've got, I've got a title, it's called Binary Opposition. Feels Binary right. Opposition? Yeah. Um, I mean, that's been going on for a couple of years in my head. Um, it might still stay in my head. It depends on, you know, we need to get some serious cash to make that kind of thing possible. So we do that. Um, we're also uh, making a new, I got, I got a meeting this after, immediately after this with a couple more members of the company to talk about making a new site, site project, um, which is, project made by Lencha, Lencha van der Kreis, who is one of the company. Uh, she made a project with some, again, with some students at MMU. And uh, I said, maybe we should look at that, developing that, that project. So we'll be looking at that, developing that on remotely again. And, uh, and Kevin and I are, and Alex are making, a, uh, making another project to keep ourselves busy. And, and I suppose looking through the archive and finding some nice photographs and touching them up on Photoshop hmm. and, then, and then publishing those. So there's, yeah, there's lots of things we want to do, like to do. If anyone's got any cash. <laughs> ah, hello, Talia. <laughs> Well, I think reckless sleepers have given us a, a wonderful cathartic release of emotions that many of us are feeling. I'm not sure how other people felt watching the hammers being taken to the walls, but uh, that image has been uh, recurring certainly in my mind uh, quite a bit. So, <laughs> so if, if nothing else, the piece has given us a, a moment uh, to uh, live out uh, through your experience what we're all kind of feeling inside with the sense of being cooped up and wanting to break down some walls and <laughs> crawl, in, crawl into some new spaces that uh, that we create as we go. Yeah, you just got to imagine that there's a fly in the room. I remember reading that that was one of the motivations for one of the workshop uh, exercises. Do you want to go into that for a moment? I thought it was fascinating. Um, it seems to be a bit of a recurring thing, actually, the fly in the room. Um, we've got it in the kids' show as well, the new kids' show we made. But actually, you can hear the, hear the fly. You can't see it. It doesn't exist. Um, yeah. I said to Tim, in, in the making of uh, Tim's guy, you just say, can you do this? He goes, yeah. And um, I said to Tim, imagine there's a fly in the room, Tim, kind of knowing that he could, he could push it. And... And he just was going like this, and and then <laughs> and then threw himself against the wall, and the and the wall kind of collapsed, and he just went through. And I was like, All right, yeah. Everyone was laughing, and it's, actually, you can see that on it is on our Vimeo site that little fragment. Um, and I often use that 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 moment as uh, as. <laughs> That's just a really good example of, of, I made a drawing and then I asked him if he could make that drawing alive. And then that, that, that event now is part of the show that is negative space. Yeah. I have plans to replace the fly swatter on my uh, kitchen cabinet with a hammer. And <laughs> <laughs> seeing my wife's response to that <laughs> the first time we have a fly. 
<laughs> Kevin actually thought of that as well, but Kevin's actually hit himself with the with the back of a hammer. You know the the the, uh, the claw. Yeah, hit himself. Ended up in hospital. That's the only accident that we've had. It's blood everywhere. Um, I see him through. Huh? Wasn't wasn't there something with Schrodinger with someone getting their finger caught and screaming in pain and everyone thinking that it was uh, part of what he was uh, acting out and and then realizing a bit later that in fact he was in actual pain. Oh no, that was Kevin again. That was Kevin, that was Kevin in, again. Yeah, that was Kevin in a in a moment of uh, of rehearsals. Lane had asked him asked us to for three of us to go through one of the hatches, and I, I think I said, yeah, uh, for, "Yeah, you can make some noise if you want to." I don't know why I said that, but and then <laughs> and then I just said, "Kevin, going ah," <laughs> and uh, yeah, and I thought, "Oh, he's really going for it." But actually, he was really in pain, and had to. <laughs> then she had to run off and get uh, some ice, and I, I, I was still in stitches. I just found it the funniest thing. Someone else having pain, I find particularly funny. <laughs> Sorry, Kevin, if you're listening. Yeah, well, in, in stitches sounds like the the best way to put that. In fact, yeah. Well, now that we've covered most of Kevin's scars, uh, any last things you'd like to touch on as far as uh, negative space or future work before we wind down? Um, I mean, we'd love to. Do, I mean, it, it's been it's been great making the making the film film. It's not a film video of uh, negative space and and actually looking at it again and again and again and again makes me want to make that project again. You know, it ma it also makes me want to remake because it's about ten years since we last remade Schrodinger. I think it's about time we we had a look at that project again, and maybe maybe that's something we would we would do in the future. It's sort of easier, you know. I mean, we're a bit tied by getting money and venues, or well, venues actually, to produce a new a new project especially in the uk uh take some serious investment um so yeah there's that and yeah there's i mean there's a, there's a whole shelf of ideas or there's a little cupboard behind mustard cupboard behind <laughs> which is full of ideas of what we'd like to do um but then you know something might just turn up and we have to run with that, you know. It's like running with with plasterboard. We didn't we didn't predict that we'd make a show smashing up the set. Uh, so I think it's I think really it's about us being able to get together as a group of artists, have a bit of fun, maybe have a bit of pain, <laughs> and then and then that journey will take us. Uh, somewhere the new show I well here's hoping that that happens and, and happens soon uh, both for reckless sleepers and for uh, all of the companies in the uk and the us and around the world uh, that are waiting to see what the next stage is going to look like literally the next stage is yeah. going to look like me too all right well thank you so much for your time mole it's been a pleasure you. meeting you uh, even in the small box uh, of yes. the zoom meeting uh, so i wanted to thank uh, theater times digital theater plus for making this possible uh, and the iotf uh, for helping out as well so uh, cheers everyone and enjoy the rest of the festival okay wonderful thank you thank you very much mike and mole for this absolutely fascinating discussion. It was wonderful. You've really given us a, a window into the creative process. And thank you everyone also for, for joining in today. All right.